Welcome back to our class. So, <clears throat> these are the four theories that we can use when discussing as to whether we can have an optimal capital structure. The first theory is called the traditional theory. Okay, so the first is called the traditional theory, <coughs> the traditional capital structure theory. What does theory say? Is that at the end of the day, yes, pro propagated, is that at the end of the day, <coughs> you may have to consider. Actually, before we discuss the theories, we, let me do introduce a concept as true. So let me introduce here. Where cost is, we have a concept here that cost is greater. So here again, rationale so behind why cost is why cost of equity, why cost of equity. Uh, board, <coughs> give me a minute. I get on the board here. Okay, so we begin the proposition. Okay, cost of debt, cost of equity. Cost of equity is greater than cost of debt. It's greater than cost of debt. And cost of debt. Okay, so generally, in capital structure theory, we assume that the equity is going to be, or it is the most expensive uh, financing alternative compared to all the others, okay? Uh, compared to the cost of private shares, compared to the cost of bank loan, compared to the cost of bonds, compared to the cost of debenture. So equity is going to be the most expensive financing alternative the company can take for a number of reasons, okay? So one of them, <coughs> why maybe we can say that equity is going to be more expensive is the flotation cost. Okay, the flotation cost. What do you mean by that? That if you have to issue, or when you when you are issuing equity in the market, okay, there are so many costs you're being carried along the way. Okay, we have uh, the the auditor's fee. We have you need to have a broker who is going to be uh, assisting maybe the the main issuing house to assist you in the issue of shares. Uh, you will have to have hire okay, a lawyer to prepare to assist you in preparing the prospectors. So there's so many costs that the company, there's so many costs that the company shall be incurring along the way. By the time they're going to be issuing uh, the debt, uh, they're going to be issuing equity in the market. Okay. Now, if you make a comparison, okay, the cost the company incurs in the issue of shares and the cost the company incurs in the issue of debt, the cost per dollar, okay, for debt is much more higher. Okay. Uh, compared to uh, the cost per dollar issued for the case of debt, okay? That the cost of floating, the cost of issuing shares uh, is much more greater if you to compare with the cost which are being carried in the issue of debt. For example, in the case of the issue of debt, okay? You don't need to prepare prospectors, okay? So you don't, you, the cost you, you shall be incurring, okay? For example, uh, if you are to, uh, you don't even to, that cost you being carried in advertising. This, is, for example, if you're going to obtain a bank loan, okay, you're going to obtain a bank loan, okay, you don't need to incur any cost of advertising. 
objective. However, if your two issue shares the market, if your share issue shares in the market, you do need to incur that cost. That cost is a must. Okay. So if you compare the cost per dollar, okay, the cost per dollar that is going to be obtained from the market is going to be much more greater if you're going to be issuing equity compared to a scenario where you're going to be issuing debt. Okay, that's one of the reason. Okay. Then secondly. <clears throat> Then also, <clears throat> year of dividend is not an obligation. A dividend is not an obligation. It's an obligation compared to interest. If you have to make a comparison with interest, which is obligatory. Obligatory. What that means is that <clears throat> whether you're going to make profit or you're going to make losses, don't forget the return to the debt holders, okay? The return to the debt holders. The return to the debt holders, of course, is in the form of the interest, okay? You have to pay for it, okay? However, as you just mentioned, okay, the topic you just concluded is that the company has no obligation when it comes to the payment of the dividend, okay? There is no obligation on the side of the company that is a must repay the dividend at this point in time, okay? We think like that you as a great shareholder, one of the return that you will be receiving is not guaranteed. When it comes to the side of the, the holders, okay, it's a guaranteed return. <clears throat> where they make, where the company is making profit or the company is making losses, the return you're meant to be receiving, the principal, the interest you're meant to be paid is a must for it to be paid. Okay, but imply that for you as the holders and you have higher risk, there's no guaranteed return at the end of the day. Okay, and of course that therefore is going to increase the cost of equity. Okay, compare the case of the cost of the debt. Okay, now this one, I mean, you don't say that uh, debt is going to be cheaper than equity. <coughs> is most of the time, okay, is that in the case of liquidation, in the case of liquidation, who get paid first, okay? The debt holders, okay, in the case of liquidation, debt holders, okay, they rank, okay, prior, or they rank before, the shareholder they run prior to the equity shareholders okay they run prior to the equity shareholders but in therefore as shareholder you're going to be paid your final dues if the company was closed down if the company was to close down you're going to be paid your final dues after the company pays the debt holders okay First of all, in point number two, don't forget the interest, the dividend you're going to pay is not guaranteed. Then, to make it worse, that now, in the case of liquidation, before the company can make any distribution, okay, what does it do? You need to pay first with the total as they do, okay? If the amount that was, uh, the company owned the total was 10 million, okay, and the assets are only worth 5 million, but imply that for the entire 5 million is getting paid first to the debt holders. Then you as equity shareholders, okay, in this context, you have zero. Because all the money has gone to the holders, all the ten million the company was uh, the the company owed you there is not even enough to be paid by the assets the company has. Okay, if the company assets gain be for example, okay, fifteen million. Okay, if the company assets is fifteen million, then you're getting paid after the company has paid the ten million it owed the holders. Okay, let's just assume that case. Okay, the company assets are worth let's say fifteen million. Okay. These are they have paid the taxes, they have paid the employees, and so those uh, prior ranking uh, obligations, okay? And the company debt, okay, is let's say uh, 10 million, okay? And the company, that means therefore, as the company, before they do make a distribution of 10, 15 million, they need to consider uh, how much of equity, okay? They need to consider how much of debt, they need to consider how much of debt they do owe. So the entire, in this context, the entire, 10 million is need it shall be paid first. So what remain is the 5 million. So for the shareholder, you're getting paid from this residue of 5 million. Okay, so you're paid from what is remaining. Okay, in this case, the residue. Okay. Otherwise, if the company assets, for example, if the company assets were, let's say, 8 million, okay, don't forget the 8 million is not even enough to pay off the 10 million the company owes the holders. 
then you apply the four, the entire eight million goes to pay off the loan, goes to pay off the debt. You as shareholder in that cost of the four, you gain remaining the rest, you is zero. So you don't get paid anything. Okay. Because therefore your risk is given much more greater than it was than the case of the debt holders. Okay. You run at higher cost at higher chance that you never be paid your money back. Okay. In terms of the interest, okay, in terms of uh, the final deals. Okay. The fourth factor that we can consider, okay, that we can say that gain be makes that more expensive could be, I know you have an input. Let me come check from you, some of you. Hadik. 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 Hey, what's happening? Eileen. Eileen. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. So what do you think could be that could make debt be more expensive to make equity more expensive than debt? Over and above what we discussed. Um because I think because in equity you have um controlling power. In equity you have um you have control of so in case yeah. you have control in the company, is it mm -hmm. good or bad for the shareholder? No. It's good or bad for the shareholder? Is it good or bad? It's good for the shareholder. Then that should make the equity to be cheaper, not expensive. Oh, for the, oh I thought you said for the company. No, no, no. No, no, for the shareholder. Oh, I don't know. Okay. So I guess, uh, let me, uh, I think on the chat I've seen, so Johan is saying that debt is tax deductible. Of course, that is the next, that's the next factor, okay? That debt is tax deductible, okay? What we call tax deductibility. What do you mean by that? I think you've seen when you were getting, when you were calculating the cost of debt, we say that RD, for example, in the case of loan, for example, okay, is the interest, one minus T, one minus T, T being the tax rate. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, okay, that the interest again paying to the bank, uh, if it is ten percent, we do have some tax benefit from that ten percent because that percent of that ten percent is a benefit of the company. So at the end of the day, that the our net expense, our net expenditure is going to be less the interest tax shield. Is going to be less the interest tax shield. Good for us. Yes, definitely in case of debt order, okay, or in case your company or finance yourself using debt, that's going to be good for you. Because your your ten percent, the entire of it in itself is not going to be a cost. There's some benefit you shall be receiving. In this case, it will be equal to uh, thirty percent of your cost. Okay. However, don't forget equity. There is no tax deductibility. The equity, the dividend you pay, okay, is not a tax deductible expense. It is not a tax deductible expense. Okay. Now, more or less, those are again the key or the core factors that again make the uh, that that uh, makes uh, cost be more expensive than the case of uh, the equity more expensive compared to the case of debt. Okay. Povital says shareholders want their money now, hence will charge more for their longer time. Hmm. Okay, I didn't get to tell what you mean by the your point there. Okay, we try to clarify on the point there. Okay, so those are going to be the uh, conventional. Okay, four reasons as to why we do consider cost of debt to be higher than the cost, cost of equity to be higher than the cost of debt. That's key four factors. Okay, case of liquidation. Okay, foundation cost. Okay, so here you have foundation cost. But so for equity, it's higher. Okay, compared to the case of debt. Okay. Uh, in the case of dividend, they are not obligatory. In the case of interest, they are. That means for you as a holder, you are more or less like, okay, uh, you, are, you are assured, okay, that you're going to be getting back uh, all your returns. In the case of liquidation, also, in the case of liquidation, don't forget, uh, debt holders, okay, you rank uh, before the shareholder, okay, you rank before the shareholder. That means, therefore, you have, uh, going to have a higher chance okay, of getting money compared to the shareholder 
in the case the company is being liquidated because of the shareholder, they're going to take what is far in this case of founders, the residue, okay, what is remaining, okay, which might, which might be nothing. So you lose everything, more or less, okay. Then you have the element of tax deductibility, okay, that the interest you do pay, okay, uh, there is going to be some benefit to see as a company. That the case, it could be that, that, for example, 30% of the expense is a benefit to the company. In the case of the equity, the dividend you pay is not a tax deductible expense, okay? The dividend is not a tax deductible expense, okay? Therefore, the entire dividend you paid, okay, is going to be an expense to, to the company, to hit an, as an, the entire way to hit as an expense. For the case of the interest, that is the only expense bit of it is, for example, the 70%. 30% uh, was a benefit. Okay, those are the four reasons as well we should be considering that equity is going to be more expensive than debt. So as we discuss the theory, we need to have that in mind, that equity is more expensive than debt. Okay, so let's go back to here yeah, from our theories. The first theory is the so-called the traditional theory. The first theory is so-called the traditional theory. Okay. Now, what does this theory say? You see that we begin with that proposition that first of all, debt is going to be cheaper than equity. Okay, that's we begin. That debt is going to be cheaper than equity. Okay. Now, first of all, let's suppose that these or they do exist an optimal capital structure. They do exist an optimal capital structure, and it says that I think the best way to explain it is through okay drawing the graph. The graph is going to help us. Okay, let me go back to my. <coughs> Okay, so this is the traditional theory. Traditional capital circuit theory, okay? So let me explain through a sort of a graph. <clears throat> this is a gearing. Okay, for example, I can use the debt to equity issue uh, as my gearing measure. Then this is cost, okay, or return, what do I want to call it? Cost of the company, return to the shareholder, okay? So if, for example, uh, we begin with a company, we begin with a company that is fully financed by equity. If we begin with a company that is fully financed by equity, what is its cost of equity? Its cost of capital. If we begin the company fully financed by equity, what is its cost of capital? <clears throat> Check. Mm -hmm. Capital. Pavitar? Yes, sir. If we begin with a company that is fully financed by the shareholder, we begin with a yes. company fully financed by the shareholder, what is its cost of capital? What is average cost of capital? So, so you're trying to say if it's um, equity capital? Sorry? What to be its cost of capital? Cost. I'm not understanding your whole question. Okay, let me repeat okay. the question. If we begin with a company that is 100% financed by equity shareholder with zero debt, what yes. weighted average cost of capital? Okay, the cost of capital will be high, yes. No, so just, just, not high or low, but what will be its, its cost of capital equal to? 100 percent sorry 100 100 mm -hmm. i'm not really sure sir you're not really no. sure okay okay let me check someone else let me check someone else mahir yes yes what will be the cost of capital of that company at that point you got a question yeah, I got it. But, uh, I yes, got sure. the question, but I'm not sure as in how to answer it. No, to as in, it. Is uh, the answer in terms of uh, the numericals, or are we supposed to say that what the company will pay for the for the equity shares, as in dividend? So the question is that what is going to be the cost of capital for such a company? Okay, we can say that it's going to be. Uh, for example, in conventional, we don't that the cost of capital for a company is equal to the weight of equity times the cost of equity plus the weight of debt uh, times the cost of debt. 
But now, in case we have to ask ourselves, if the company is fully financed by equity, what will be its cost of capital equal to? What will be its will and cost of capital? I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't know the, the answer. You don't, you don't know the answer. Don't worry. Let me ask someone else. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Mandela. Mandela. Yes. Yes. Um, I think it will be the the market value of the equity times mm -hmm. the its cost. Mm -hmm. Over the um, over over the market value. Market value of. Market value of the equity. Mm -hmm. uh, multiplied by its cost. Cost of equity. Mm -hmm. Um. Over the now the market over the market value of the equity. I don't know. Market value of equity. Okay, it's true. So if we simplify this, give us what? If we simplify, don't forget this, to the two cancel each other out. Okay, so it means with cost of equity. Okay, that's again the cost of equity. Okay, therefore, from it, we can deduct and say that if we begin the company that is fully financed by equity shareholder, its weighted average cost of capital is simply the cost of equity. Okay, it's simply the cost of equity. Okay. Now, if now, so here, assume that this is the beginning. This is now assume the beginning cost of equity. Okay, we are saying that if the company is fully financed, in short, it has zero gearing. Okay, it has zero gearing. It has zero debt in its capital structure. Therefore, its cost of capital is equal to the cost of equity. Okay, at the beginning. Now, what if now we increase debt? Okay, the, the short, therefore we are going. We are increasing our debt. We are increasing the gearing. Okay, we are trying to get as much debt uh, to finance as well. What will happen if we are increasing debt? What happens is that don't forget the company. You first be in a company that is fully financed by equity shareholders. So first of all, they don't have any person who is going to ranking before them in terms of, for example, uh, distribution of the company final uh, uh, final uh, asset assets. Okay. That means, therefore, if now we have a debt holder, it means you're going to, we have introduced someone else who rank before the shareholder. Now, what is going to be the cost of equity? Let me check <clears throat> from you. Johannes. Johannes. Hey, Johannes, you normally don't answer questions. What happens? Hadik? Hadik? Hey, you guys, what happened in here? Yes, Hadik. <coughs> Hadik, you have one minute deal. Hey, so what happened? Elaine. Yes. Yes. In case now here, we have we have started off with a company that is fully financed by equity shareholders. In case we increase the gearing, and by increasing the gearing, we mean that we are introducing uh, debt holders in in, uh, in finance the carbon assets. Okay, now we are trying to introduce debt holders. That means, therefore, for example, in case of liquidation, okay, we have seen that the person who is getting paid first is a debt holder. That means, therefore, the company before, the shareholder before, they were the only person in the company. That means, therefore, in case of liquidation, all of the company assets were to be given to them. But now, don't forget we have debt holders now, okay? We have debt holders now. Now, what therefore will happen therefore the cost of equity? Now that you have introduced someone else to uh, do grant before the shareholder. Elaine, what do you think? Um, will it increase or decrease? I think it, it will decrease increase do increase i think so i don't know i think so 
yes, it will increase. Don't forget, because here, we have seen that before, all the company returns, all the company profit, okay, in short, in quote, they were yours, okay, you are the only person who was financing the company. But now, the company is bringing someone else to rank who is, in quote, more powerful, in quote, okay, more powerful. Someone who is going to be, uh, uh, before any distribution made to you, they need to pay it first. That means, therefore, your risk is high. The chance you can pay your return is increasing, is the, the chance is decreasing. Because someone else who rank prior with you is now getting is now financing the company, so therefore your risk is higher. Okay, the what about the cost of equity? The cost of equity they will be increasing. Okay, therefore as gear increases, the cost of equity will be increasing. Okay, that's how uh, it will be like. As we increase the gearing, the cost of or the cost of equity that will also be increasing. Okay, that's what's going to happen. That is in case of increase the gearing. Now, don't forget, we say that equity is more expensive, equity as a finance alternative is more expensive compared to debt as a financing alternative, okay? Which means, therefore, at the beginning, we had a company that was fully financed by debt, by equity, sorry. Now, in case, we, in case now we do have debt holders who come to finance the company, what is happening is that uh, we are sort of like replacing equity with debt. We are with equity with debt. Okay, let's say first begin with debt. We are saying that debt is gained through an equity. So assume that this is gaining me the cost rate at the beginning. Okay, at that point, it's lower. Don't forget the cost of equity is higher than cost of debt. Okay, it's lower. Now, if for example the company gets financed by assume they acquire, let's say for example, ten million. Just an example. Okay, of course it's not they don't, This is a gearing ratio. Let me actually use the ratios. Okay, so the first holder, this is the first holder, they give the company $10 million and the gear of the company increased from zero to let's say 10%, just an example, okay, from zero to 10%, okay. Then the company goes ahead, increase, obtain more debt, okay. Let's see, you have second debt holder. They give the company an extra 10 million and the gear increase from 10% to 20%. Now the question is, okay, between the first holder and the second debt holder, between the first debt holder, the one who gave them his money, for example, in the year 2015, and the one who gave the money in the year 2018, who get paid first? In the case of liquidation, in the case of interest payment, who get paid first? Let me check someone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Timothy. Timothy, yeah. yes. Who get paid first between the two debt holders? You got the question, Timothy? No, I'm not really sure I got the question. Okay. Now, here we have two debt holders. The first debt holder of the company did obtain its first debt ever in the year 2015. The second debt the company obtained was in year 2018. So we have two debt holders. This who gave the company 10 million in the 2015 and the one who gave the company uh, the money in 2018. Now, assume that now we are in the 2020, okay? And the company is paying the interest to the two debt holders. Who is getting paid first? The first or the second debt holder? That's the question, Timothy. The, the first debt holder. Who debt holders. It, 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 yes. yes, so the first debt holder is one who is getting paid first. If the money is not enough, then second debt holder is going to wait until maybe the company is able to make more money. Okay, in quotes, okay. But essentially, the first debt holder is getting paid first. In the case of liquidation, the same thing happened. Okay, the first debt holder is getting paid first. If some asset remain, then the second debt holder comes in, and then equity comes after that. Which means, therefore, the first the second debt holder has a higher risk than the first debt holder. So since the risk of separate order is higher than the first debt holder, it means the return they shall be requiring is also higher. Therefore, at the beginning, from, from let's say from zero to ten percent, the cost more or less remain constant. However, after that, what happens? The company cost will be increasing. The cost of debt will be increasing because now we have the second debt holders coming in. Okay, and the cost of debt holder, the cost of debt therefore will also start increasing. Okay, will also start increasing. That's coming for the cost of debt. It will increase. Okay? Because at subsequent debt holder, because subsequent debt holders, they become more expensive. Okay. Because here the dollar said in the case of liquidation, the first uh, debt holders rank prior the second debt holders. Okay. 
How does that say that? At the beginning, we had a company that was fully financed by equity. It was the cost of capital, but then was equal to the cost of equity. Okay, was equal to the cost of equity. In case you increase the gearing, what is happening is that you are replacing equity with debt. Don't get here, we begin a company that is zero debt. Okay, we increase to 10, we increase to 20, to that, to 40, whatever it is. Okay, therefore, the first debt holder, okay, was coming in like sort of instead of a company going to, the, to the, going to the to, to equity shareholder, they went for debt holders. It means the company was replacing its previous financials equity with a new financials, in this case, the debt. Okay. Now, what happened therefore? Replacing more expensive, don't forget equity is more expensive than equity, is than debt. Okay. What happened therefore the company, cost of capital, if you had to replace a more expensive financial alternative with a cheaper finance alternative? Okay. What happened to the company, weighted average cost of capital, if we replace, let me actually, let me begin from here. They're given, just to give an example. You see, this is the scenario one, scenario two, scenario three, okay? Now this is uh, weight, call it weight, uh, debt equity, and this is the cost, debt equity. Okay, this is just a hypothetical case, okay? So we begin with a company that has zero debt percent, it has zero percent equity, okay? Scenario two, we increase debt, okay? For example, from zero to, let's say, uh, 30%. Equity decrease to 70%, uh, scenario three, 50-50. Okay, just a hypothetical case. The cost of debt, okay? Equity, let's for example, begin with 15%. Uh, debt then there was nothing, okay? So this, because there's nothing there at that point. Now here, actually let's use what here, just use 10-20. Let's just, let me change this to 10-20. <clears throat> So this is a cost scenario, 10%, this is 20%, this is 90%, and this is 80%, okay? Now the first holder, assume they charge the company, let's say 5%, okay? So that's at the beginning, the first holder, they charge the company 5%. Equity is more expensive, the cost is increasing. It increased, for example, from 15 to let's say uh, 17%. Okay, this is just an example, okay? In that scenario, the debt, the second debt holder is more expensive, okay? So the two debt holders, I assume their cost is, let's say, 7%, okay? The equity is becoming more expensive, I assume to increase, let's say, 20%. Now the question is that, what is the company with average cost of capital? At the beginning, we say the cost of capital is equal to 15%, the cost of equity. But there's no, there's no equity here, there's no debt here. So the company cost of capital is simply, the company uh, is simply equal to the company cost of equity. Now, in the second scenario, what the company cost? In the second scenario, what's the company cost? I think you can do the calculation, and as well as in that scenario, can you attempt that question? It's simply the weight times the cost. Weight times the cost. Weight times the cost. So, what do you get in the second scenario? And that scenario. Okay, and get 14.6, yes, that's what I intended. Let me get 14.6 to be uh, the cost. Thank you, 14.6, yes, okay. Now, at the beginning, <coughs> at the beginning, that is from scenario one, the cost was equal to 15%. So cost scenario, the cost was 14.6. That scenario, the cost increased 17.4. Now, what I wanted here is to say that at the beginning, if you replace the more expensive finance alternative equity, with a cheaper finance alternative, the cost of the company is going to be decreasing. But at the time we reach when actually the, the cost start increasing, okay? The cost start even increasing further. So at the beginning, the cost to be decreasing. Just try to attempt to draw the graph. So it start, at the beginning, they start decreasing. Then at some point, the cost will start increasing. And at some point in the future, the cost will start increasing. Now for this company, what do you need to know? For this company, you need to know at what point do we have the minimum cost of capital? 
I'm assuming the tree of this, for example, here, and let me just draw it. Okay. I'm assuming there is a point we have. Let me just rub off this. Okay. That's a point that we have here. Okay. Now this way we have the minimum. The point when you have the minimum, cost of capital. This is the minimum. Okay, it should be like here. Okay. This point. But that has become therefore the optimal capital structure. We are able to achieve the minimum, as you see here, the cost was 15, decreased 14.6, then increased to 17.4. So get to know at what point, therefore, do we achieve that minimum, okay? We just saw the point O. Now that point O become therefore our optimal capital structure, our auto mix of debt and equity. Assume that for the case of argument, this was 15%. And for this point, at point in time, when you have 15% debt to equity ratio, then the company is able to achieve an optimal capital structure. The company is able to achieve an optimal capital structure. Okay. Don't forget at the beginning, why the cost is decreasing is because the way the company with the average, the company with the average cost of capital is decreasing is because we are replacing a more expensive finance alternative equity with a cheaper financing alternative. In this case, therefore, uh, debt. But a point would be when that benefit is outweighed by the cost of equity, the cost of debt increasing from two, for example, to 10%, and the cost of equity also increasing from 12 to 20%. So the benefit you are receiving of replacing the more aggressive uh, financing alternative with a cheaper financing alternative is going to be lost. Why? Because the debt is increasing, the cost of debt is increasing, and the cost of equity is also increasing. Therefore, that benefit is lost. And as you can see, the cost has jumped, okay, for example, 20.4%. So the company, therefore, you need to understand, therefore, at what point, therefore, do you achieve that minimum? At that point, where do you achieve the minimum? Okay, uh, for example, 15%. Therefore, at 15%, that's become, therefore, your optimal capital structure. Your optimal capital structure. Therefore, as per the theory, an optimal capital structure exists. It is going to be different for each of the company. So what is what matters is it's for you as a company to understand what is our optimal capital structure. What do we do in order to achieve our optimal capital structure? Okay. Therefore, as by theory, an optimal capital structure exists. What do, how do you explain in case you've been asked okay, in case this was meant to be a question? Okay. How do you answer it? answer it from the perspective that at the beginning the cost of equity is will be increasing why because we have a higher financial risk for the shareholder okay the subs as the year increases a meter for the chance of them being paid dividend is decreasing in the case of liquidation don't forget you have introducing in quote a competitor the company's profit that's why the cost of equity is increasing and also at the beginning the cost of it remain constant, okay? It's okay, not going to remain, it's going to sort of increase steadily, okay? Why? Because the subsequent debt holder, the subsequent debt holders, they are, they're going to rank after the first debt holders, after the preceding debt holders. So their, their risk is much higher. Their financial risk is higher. The second debt holder, it is financial risk is higher compared to the first debt holder. So since their risk is higher, they should be expecting higher returns. And as you can see, the cost of debt is increasing. At the beginning, you are replacing the more expensive financing alternative equity with a cheaper finance alternative. At the beginning, you are replacing the more expensive finance alternative with a cheaper financing alternative. You replace equity with debt. They have what happens there for the cost of debt? What happened there for what happened there for the company cost of capital? The company weighted average cost of capital was decreasing. However, a point you need to end, the benefits of replacing the equity with the debt is going to be outweighed by the increase in the cost of equity and the increase in the cost of debt. At that point in time, the cost of capital, the company with the average cost of capital will start increasing. Therefore, for companies, it is upon them as manager to get to know what is our optimal capital structure, okay, which of course will be different for each of the firm. Okay, so for the company, they need to decide what therefore is an optimal capital structure. An optimal capital structure exists as per this theory. Clear? To explain the theory, to explain the theory, it's simple. Just understand why the cost of equity is increasing, okay? And understand why the cost of debt is increasing. 
Okay, and as long as the cost is, is decreasing, decreasing in the beginning and then increasing afterwards. Those are the four things that you may want to, you need to explain, okay, in case you need to explain this theory. Why is this increasing? Point one, why is the cost of debt increasing? Why does it decrease at the beginning? And why does it decrease after? So we'll start those four points, be able to explain those four uh, cases. Clear? Question? And that's the first capital structure theory. If there's no question, then I guess we can call it a day. The next time we meet, we discuss the three remaining theory, okay? Uh, the MM without tax, MM with tax, and the pecking order theory. Those therefore will be our next three theories we will discuss uh, under capital structure theory. If no question, then we can call it a day. Don't forget you sign off the register. Okay, thank you and enjoy your evening. See you on Thursday.